All right, good after, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Nitha Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 1028. We are live on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, on all the podcast platforms. So please, fans, tune in. And I have a special co-host with me today. His name is Cole Weintraub from MLB Draft League. Go check out his stuff. He, he does an amazing job with that league and doing big things right now in baseball. And today we are joined by a really special guest. His name is Bruce Rondon. He's a former MLB pitcher, but now he's currently playing in Mexico, and he's killing it there. Uh, awesome season so far for him there. So really excited for this. So like I said, fans, please tune in. Uh, fan interactions is always good for us. So uh, on the Spreaker app, you can ask questions too uh, to Bruce. But Bruce, first of all, uh, thank you guys for joining us. And uh, how are you and your family doing today? Everything good. Thanks, God. All right, that's good. So, uh, Cole, you want to start it off? Yeah, so, Bruce, going back to sort of the beginning of your career, what was it like to be named to the Futures game in 2012? And describe to me what that experience was like. Eh, yendo atrás de tu carrera, ¿cómo se siente haber sido nombrado para los Juegos de Futuro Estrella en el 2012? Bien, bien, mira, fue una experiencia muy bonita. Me sentí muy feliz porque era uno de los sueños más grandes que yo Yo quería cumplir porque para Iván todas las mejores estrellas de los equipos. It was a really nice experience. It was one of those um, dreams I want to achieve, one of my goals. And it felt really good to be able to achieve it. Mm. Awesome. Wow. Good answer. Yeah, so uh, tell our fans, um, who were some of the pitchers that you looked up to while growing up and then working on your craft? ¿Cuáles fueron uno de los pitchers que tú mirabas para cuando crecías? Pues no veía piche, veía era al gato Andrés Galarraga, a Bo Abreu, a esas personas eran siempre bateadores porque eran los que más ponían en la televisión. He never looked up to no pitchers, he, he always looked up to um, batters. It was okay. Andrés Galarraga, uh, um, Bobby Abreu, because mm. that was the player that they always show on the TV. He mm. never show up. Right. So back in 2014, you underwent Tommy John surgery. Tell us, tell us about how the injury occurred and your recovery journey prior to returning in 2015. Boston septiembre, algo así fue. No recuerdo muy bien. Y fue un proceso bien largo y bien preocupante. Um, it, I started feeling like in 2013 when I um pitched to David Ortiz. I don't re he don't recall it was September or October. He don't remember the the month. Um, and the recovery was really really long. It was really a struggle and long one. Hmm. Can you uh t can you tell us how you got how you became a relief pitcher and did you ever consider being a starter throughout your career and uh, what what made you become into a, a reliever in, in the in the MLB? ¿Alguna vez pensaste ser abridor en la MLB o cómo viniste siendo un reliever? No, siempre, siempre me, mantu me mantuvieron cerrando. Siempre fui un cerrador. He always was a closer. They never considered him for opener. He was okay. over, always a closer. Hmm. Oh. So part of what makes, you know, relief pitchers so hard to hit is, you know, top tier velocity. So at what age did you hit 100 miles an hour off the mound? Hmm. Era tu... Tirate tu primera bola así o más. Creo que a los 19 o 18. 19 or 18 years old. Wow. Ooh. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so we are live with former MLB pitcher Bruce Rondon, who's currently pitching in Mexico. Hey, Bruce, we already have a fan question in for you. One, uh, one of our fans want to know uh, who was the who was the toughest uh, hitter you had to face in the majors. Un fanático te pregunta cuál ha sido el bateador más duro que tú has tenido que pichar en la gran liga. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. Hmm. What what made him so so tough? Que lo hizo tan difícil. Que lo hizo tan difícil. Eh, bueno, ese fue el momento cuando me se me rompieron los tejidos porque en ese momento había bases llenas, dosado y él era uno de los mejores bateadores en en ese conteo en con bases llenas porque del 100% El 95, 96 percent 
siempre da bajío o no. No. Y fue con ese, ese momento. At that moment, it was really tough. It was full base. Oh. I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. It was full base. Two, um, only like two out. And on the 100%, he always was hitting like a 95% oh. when there was base and everything. And at that moment is when I start feeling pain before mm. why I went to Tommy John. So it was a tough one. Sure. Yeah, so uh, take us back to that moment when the Detroit Tigers gave you the opportunity to start your career in 2013. Obviously, you spent time there for three years, 15 and 17. But just take us back to the moment, the first time they gave you an opportunity to be able to pitch in, in the majors. Eh, recuerda eh, tu primera oportunidad que te dio Detroit de jugar en la Grande Liga. Pues sí, cómo olvidarlo. Mira, de verdad, fue una experiencia muy bonita pero con mucho, con mucho nervio, mucho miedo, mucho todo. Hmm. De verdad que, que no, no lo creía, pero a la vez me sentía muy, muy nervioso con tanta gente y tantas cosas así, porque no lo creía que ya había estado en Grandes Ligas. It is something difficult to forget, um, but I was really ner nervous, um, scared. A lot of people in the, in the stadium. Hmm. It's your first time. It's something that is... It's unbelievable, but at the same time, was really, really um, nervous. Well, so, so with the recent news that the World Baseball Classic is coming back in 2023, I wanted to ask you how you felt being able to represent your home country of Venezuela in the 2017 World Baseball Classic. And have you heard any information? Are you going to be back on that Venezuelan team? Hmm. Por repente el clásico que viene ahora. Eh... ¿Sabes si va a representar tu país? ¿Cómo te sentirías representando tu país? ¿Has escuchado algo? Pues, si me dan la oportunidad, eh, con gusto lo volveré a hacer. Y, y bueno, esperando las oportunidades, porque más que todo es, son oportunidades que te brindan y todavía no me han dicho nada y todavía no han hablado sobre eso. Y pues, esperando las respuestas de, de los dirigentes. They, um, they haven't been in contact with me. I haven't heard nothing of them, but if they give me the opportunity to represent my country once again, I would be really glad to do it. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, Bruce, we, we already have, we have another fan question in here. Uh, someone wants to know, what was it like being Miguel Cabrera's teammate on the field and off the field? ¿Cómo se siente ser eh, compañero de Miguel Cabrera en el terreno y fuera del terreno? Mira, de verdad bien. Eh, es una persona que, que es admirable, una persona respetada. Una persona que, que ha hecho tanto en el béisbol que, que se, se admira y se respeta. Um, it feels really good. Um, Miguel Cabrera is a very um, respectful person, very professional. And um, it feels good to be um, playing with him and meeting him outside the field also. Hmm. So kind of like a two-part question, like as a whole, how would you describe your time in the MLB? And do you hope to get another chance in the big leagues? And if you did, what would you do differently? Eh, son como dos preguntas. ¿Cómo te sentías pertenecer al MLB? Y si te dieran, ¿te gustaría volver a la MLB? Y si te dieran otra oportunidad, ¿qué haría diferente? Mira, ¿qué haría diferente? Ya, ya no sería el mismo niño que estuve en las grandes ligas. Ya he madurado un poco. Ya, ya he aprendido a lanzar mis lanzamientos con mayor madurez. Y, y esa etapa ya la he quemado. Um, what can I do different? I'm not the same kid. Um, I had learned from my experiences. I know how to pitch um, better. And I'm not going to be that same kid that was in the MLB on the past. I'm a more mature person. And I had learned how to control more of my pitches. So it will be much, much better. Hmm. So uh, take, take his... Uh... When you take us to the first game of your career, I was pitching with Detroit, and uh, take when you got uh, when you got onto the mound, take us to the how how nervous were you? Uh, the first game you ever pitched. Tu primer juego con en la MLB, qué tan nervioso tú estaba que le no lleva ese momento. No era no era nervio por lanzar, sino era como la alegría, la emoción, todas esas cosas se me unieron, ¿sabes? Y sentí como que era nervio porque a lo mejor estaba tan, tan presionada de hacer las cosas bien porque iba a era 
a sustituir a Verlande porque él fue que abrió ese juego. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a nervous, like that type of nervous. It was like um, the moment, like, you know, the nervous of being there in the mounds, beaching mm -hmm. for the first time. And I was going in back of um, Belander. It was like, you know, the first time a lot of people and it was like everything together. It felt like nervous, but it wasn't like a nervous for throwing that pitch. It was like, like more the nervous of the place, like being there. So who has been the biggest like influence in your career? Mi madre. My mother. And and why? Porque siempre he estado desde niño, sabes, siempre siempre me ha apoyado desde niño, siempre ha sido la que siempre peleó conmigo, siempre las personas que no querían que yo siguiera en béisbol, ella siempre confió en mí, siempre estuvo ahí conmigo, siempre fue el apoyo, pues. She was the one that gave me the support. She was the one that pushed me. Like every time that somebody told me like you cannot keep being a baseball player, she was the one that pushed me to keep doing it and never um go back. She was the one that gave me the hundred percent support. Well, really cool. Yeah, that, that's amazing, and that's what I love to hear about when it comes to stories like that. And Obviously, family is really important. But Bruce, uh, tell us about pitching behind Verlander. Uh, what was it like seeing him go about his business every five days on the mound? And he's electric, obviously, and obviously had that big Tommy John surgery, Tommy John surgery, and he's back and pitching unbelievably again. So, what was it like seeing Verlander being your teammate? ¿Cómo se siente? Eh, ¿Qué cómo sentiste ser el, el teammate de Verlander? Mira, se sintió bien. Mira, fueron fueron muchas muchas estrellas. Ese año que, que me subieron a mí a la Grande Liga y no solamente fue Berlander, Tori Hunter, Kisle, fueron muchos, Primfield, Joaquín Benoit, Víctor Martí, fueron muchas estrellas que estuvieron conmigo en ese momento que para mí fue, fue inolvidable. It was a lot of um, baseball stars that were there. Um, it felt really good to be behind Berlander, but there was a lot of stars that he looked over, like all the one that he mentioned, Tori, ¿cuál es fuera? Berlande, Pinfield, Prince Felder, Victor Martinez, Dory Hunter. Dory Hunter. There was a lot of them that he looked up to. Hmm. So where would you say your favorite place to play was in the big leagues? Maybe not maybe not your your home ballpark in Detroit and Chicago, but maybe like an away ballpark. Eh, ¿Cuál fue tu mejor estadio para jugar en la Grande Liga? ¿Cómo? ¿Cuál tú consideras que fue el mejor estadio para pisar en la Grande Liga? <sighs> Tuve dos, eh, San Diego, Padre y Boston. I had y los Yankees. It would be San Diego Padres, um, Boston, and Yankees. Yeah, nice. Sure. Yeah, so um, take us uh, – so during one season you had a, a streak going on with 100 miles per hour pitches for I think it was nine consecutive, nine consecutive games. So take us to that moment. Uh, how, how special is that for you uh, to have that, that record for 100 miles per hour pitch? Tuve un récord que lanzaste nueve picheo en cien miles. ¿Cómo te sentiste con tener ese récord? Mira, de verdad, no sé, lo veía como normal, ¿sabes? Porque es que nunca intenté hacer ese récord, pues simplemente estaba enfocado en lanzar el juego y nunca pensé que estaba por encima de las cien millas tan constante. To be honest, um, it's feel normal. Like, I just went there to make the pitches. Um, I never was like, let me break the record to throw in 100. It just happened. It was like something normal is that that just happened. Mm -hmm. I never was looking to break the record. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that ma that makes a bunch of sense. You're going out there, you're doing your job, yeah. you're going through your mechanics, and it kind of just flies out 100 miles an hour. So that's pretty cool. But so, who was the funniest teammate that you ever played with? ¿Cuál ha sido el jugador tu compañero más chistoso con el que tú has en Grandes Ligas. Ajá. Torijonte. Y sí, ellos. Soy dos tú. Okay. Hmm. So we have another fan question that just popped in. One of our fans want to know, uh, describe some of your best moments with the Tigers and the White Sox. Eh, un fanático quiere saber si tú le puedes describir tus mejores momentos con Detroit Tigers y con White Sox. Bueno, siempre tuve mejores momentos fue con Detroit, ¿sabes? Porque viví más con Detroit, 
tuve más con Detroit, me dieron más oportunidades con Detroit. Y de verdad, para mí, mi sueño siempre ha sido estar con Detroit, ¿sabes? Porque fueron los que me brindaron las oportunidades, fueron los que me ayudaron a llegar a Grandes Ligas, los que dedicaron tiempo para estar ahí conmigo. Y de verdad, fue más, más bonito con Detroit. Pero no tiene ningún momento bueno con Wysox. Eh, sí, pues cuando... Hice el récord de los siete ponches seguidos cuando subí. Okay. With um, Detroit, um, I had more like good times because it was the team that gave me the opportunity. It was the team that I spent most of my time. It is the team that if I could, I want to go back. Um, it's, it's my home team. Um, with White Sox, the, the, more, the memorable one that I have is the one that I break the record, the seven, siete ponches. Seven KO, KO. So, since getting to Mexico, what mechanical changes have you made, and has your you know pitch mix repertoire has that stayed the same since the last time you pitched in the majors? Pues no. Porque en Grandes Ligas lanzaba más duro. Eh, solamente tenía mis slides y el cambio, pero no eran tan efectivos como son ahorita. Porque en ese momento no hacían la misma rotación que hacen ahorita mis picheos. Y ahorita en estos momentos, yo aprendí a lanzar todos esos picheos así. Fue en la Liga Venezolana el año pasado. Um, no, my pitching is not the same. Um, in big league, I used to throw more faster. In here, I had like more command with my pitching, and um, I know how to come on more my slider, my another Cambio. change, and um, and I and I learned how to adjust them in the Venezuela league mm. this year. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so speaking of playing in Mexico, what's it been like for you so far? Obviously, I said earlier you're were, you're were killing it right now as a closer there. And um, what's it been like pitching there? And also speak about the fan base because the fans must be crazy in Mexico too. ¿Cómo se siente pichar aquí en México? En México, ¿qué tal la la fanaticada? Mira, de verdad se siente bien, pero hay que acostumbrarse más que todo a la altura. Es un poco difícil porque hay sitios que los picheos sí hacen efecto, hay otros que se quedan flotando por la altura y todas esas cosas, pero la fanática de Diablo eh, es demasiado emocionante, de verdad, que es muy bueno lanzar ahí. Um, to be pitching here in Mexico is having a challenge to the altitude mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. High. So when you pitch, you need to, there's some places that due to the altitude, um, when you pitch, like, it stay, they stay floating. Mm. So it's a little bit like difficult when that thing happened. And with the fans, Mexico fans, they are the best. They are really, really the best. Yeah, and you speak to altitude. Everyone talks about Coors Field in Colorado being, you know, such a tough place to pitch because the balls are just flying out there and it's it's hard to, you know, keep the ball in the yard. So if if you could like take me back to like earlier in career, did you have like a moment where You, your eyes just opened and you were like, wow, like here I am in the big leagues. Was there like a, was there a moment, maybe not your debut, but was, was there a moment early on in your career? Hubo un momento en tu carrera que tú dijiste, no debe ser exactamente tu día que tú debutaste, sino en tu momento que dijiste, wow, ya, yo sí estoy en grande liga, ya estoy en grande liga. Mira, cuando G. Lilan me dio la oportunidad en Cleveland, mm. que habían bases llenas, cero out y me dio la oportunidad en el octavo inning y me dijo hazte hombre como diciendo enséñame que si sí puedes estar aquí eh, ok tú sabes el año 13 it was in 2013 when gave, they gave me the ball in Cleveland hmm. it's loaded no out a inning and um ¿cómo se llama Mario? Jim Dillon Jim Dillon I don't know how to Dillon. say that one oh. Gave me the ball and told me, um, be a man. This is the moment to be a man. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great. Yeah, so uh, we have another fan question. Someone wants to know, um, what's your favorite go-to snack? What is your favorite snack? Like a snack of food. Like a snack of food. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> do you do, would you say that you have a go-to meal like before before each game or is it kind of different every time no pues, no no como cuando voy a la casa. I normally doesn't eat when I'm on the beach. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so, um, oh, sorry. You they, go. Go, go, go. You go. No, you're up. All you're right. Up. <laughs> All right. So, uh tell us um tell us about what what's uh what are you most looking forward to obviously continuing the season with Mexico and um what what do you look, what do you look to improve on? Eh, que tú busques, o sea, como que tú buscas ver cómo se, sería la liga, cómo tú seguirías yendo aquí en México y que tú piensas mejorar. Pues mira, eh, mejorar, mejorar mi consistencia un poquito, pero desde que llegué aquí a la Ciudad de México he mejorado mucho mis picheos, mi localización y todas esas cosas. He mejorado un mundo, a lo mejor porque por la adrenalina de la, de la fanaticada, un equipo que está compitiendo más el primer puesto y siento que, que eso me ha ayudado mucho. Um, I would like to um, fix my consistency, but as I arrived here in Mexico, I feel like I have changed a lot. I don't know if it's to the fans or to, to the team that we competed for the first place, but my consistency is something I would like to change. Okay. Would you say that is is there a pitcher in the MLB today that you really enjoy watching and what makes him stand out? Hay un pitcher ahora mismo en la MLB que te que te gusta ver y por qué él sobresale. Pues no que me gusta ver, a mí me gusta verlo todas las personas que le está yendo bien porque de ahí yo me enfoco en lo más perfecto que está haciendo y lo practico. Um, there's, there's not a specific one. I just like to see all of them that are doing good so I can learn from them what they're doing good so I can take like a little bit from that and learn it. Hmm. And awesome. Yeah, so I want to talk, I wanna talk, obviously if you want, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're still watching the um, the league in the, in the MLB league, but um, to, can you tell, explain what do you like about uh, this year's Tigers and, and the young crew they have? Obviously, their young, talented team still growing. But what do, you, what do you like about your former team, the Detroit Tigers? Mira, de verdad, me está gustando porque están volviendo a formar un equipo competitivo. Y eso es bueno, pues, ¿sabes? Si les invierte, vas a tener un equipo que, que siempre va a dar la talla in the hora moment. What I'm liking for them is that they are starting to have another, t again, a, a competitive team. Mm. It's like the best thing if they keep doing that, they're going to keep having that good team. Yeah, and I mean, they're in the American League Central, and that's, you know, a division that's really wide open for anyone to take. You know, Minnesota's not great. Uh, you know, the White Sox are up and down, so I think if Detroit can really develop their young talent, I think they'll be you know, right up there with them. So if you had to give a piece of advice to a young pitcher out there, what would you say to them? Pues que fuera consistente en, en su picheo y fuera mm -hmm. más inteligente en su secuencia. Porque en Grandes Ligas se trabaja más con la secuencia y y pienso que eso lo va a ayudar mucho en su carrera. Um, to be more, more consistent, consistent in his um, pitches and to have more, ¿cómo secuencia? Secuencia. Secounds. More sequence in his, um, the, the way that he throw. Because that's the, why you work more in Big League. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, so we have another fan question uh, that just popped in. Someone wants to know about your routine as a closer, because uh, obviously you have to wait a long time before your name be, name gets called. But what, what do you do in between the games, in between innings, to get ready, just in case if your name get called? ¿Qué tú haces eh, entre innings antes de que tu nombre sea llamado para prepararte a cerrar? Mira, primero que todo, en el quinto inning, eh, hago mi rutina, me estrecho, me doy mi masaje con los mentores. Y después hago muchas ligas y me voy para el, 
para el juego y ahí espera la oportunidad. Um, I start preparing a fifth inning. That's where I start doing my exercise yeah. and stretch and my massage. Then I go outside and to the game and wait to be cold. Hmm. Was there a piece of advice that a former player or yeah, maybe former teammate or former coach gave you that you kind of took with you throughout your tenure in the big leagues? Hay una, algún consejo que un jugador o un coach o alguien que te haya dado en Grande Liga que tú lo has mantenido contigo. Mira, me lo dio fue el Kir Rodríguez. Mm. Un consejo que fue lo que hablamos ahorita, lo, del, lo de la secuencia y todas esas cosas. Y yo siento que desde que aprendí la secuencia me ha ido mucho mejor desde que aprendí ese, ese mensaje. The advice was given by um, Kid Rodriguez. Okay. Um, he gave me the advice about the sequence. And since he gave me the advice, um, I started um, seeing changes in my pitches. So I, I, I know you're focused on pitching on Mexico with Mexico this year, but what, what would it be like if you got another opportunity in the majors, if a team calls you or calls your agent, uh, say, uh, I'm interested in you. Uh, why not come to, uh, to minor league camp or whatever? Uh, what would that be like if, if that happens? I know you're focused with Mexico, but what, what would it be like if that happens? Yes, the equipo de Grande Liga. Él sabe que tú te enfocado en Mexico, pero como sería si un equipo de Grande Liga te llama? de que quiere darte la oportunidad de que vaya a jugar para allá, así sea para la Liga Menor. Mira, de verdad, trabajaría el doble de lo que ya estoy trabajando para tratar de, de hacer mi trabajo el, el, lo mejor que pueda hacerlo, porque eso es una gran oportunidad que me están brindando. Um, if it that happen, I will work the double that I'm working right now, because it is an opportunity they're giving me and a good opportunity they're going to be giving me and I will work the double. Mm -hmm. Overall, what would you say like the biggest differences of pitching in Mexico and pitching in the big leagues? Obviously the competition is not going to be maybe as strong in Mexico, but what what's different? I, I don't know how to put it to words. Maybe maybe you can. ¿Qué sería, qué tú consideras que es lo diferente de pichar en México y en la MLB? La diferencia es la altitud. The difference is the altitude. Mm. En Grandes Ligas los picheos hacen más, pero en México hay ciertas partes que no, no, no hacen el mismo quiebre y, y la misma rotación de, de la bola. En México, due to altitude, the pitch sometimes doesn't rotate the, the way they're supposed to rotate. Um, some pitch doesn't go down how they're supposed to go. And it, that's the difference. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Someone, someone wants to know if you have a nickname. The <laughs> minor. <laughs> oh, man. Nothing. Anything. All right. So, um, so before, all right. So before we get to uh the last, before we get to the last thing, uh, tell what would you say. Right now, what, what, do you, what would you tell your fans now and, and how grateful are you to be in this position uh, to be able to still be pitching but uh, in a different league, though? But just what would you tell your fans about your uh, about the opportunity here? ¿Qué tú le dirías a tu fanático sobre la oportunidad? Mira, de verdad, primero que todo, dale mil gracias porque sin ellos yo siento que nadie me fuera conocido, no me fueran brindado tantas oportunidades que me han brindado y de verdad, aunque no me den la oportunidad siempre han sido agradecidos de ellos porque siempre estuvieron conmigo en las buenas y en las malas I will be always thankful for my fans uh, without them, nobody will know who's, who I am and I wouldn't get the opportunity of getting in other places, if I ever get the, the opportunity back to the MLB or not I will still be thankful to them because they always supported me the way they, they are hmm. So I'd say around like 2015, 2016, analytics became a big part of baseball. Uh, and especially with pitchers, you start to see spin rates and, you know, horizontal movements on pitches. In Mexico, do they emphasize analytics? Uh, do you pay attention to your spin rates? 
um, like they might do it in Major League Baseball? Eh, me, en el 2015 2016 en los Estados Unidos como en, en la MLB comenzaron como la venta de Spring Break, como de uh -huh. aquí en, en México hace lo mismo le dan el fácil eso creo que sí lo están haciendo creo que lo están haciendo yeah, um, he think they doing it but they don't give that much emphasis like MLB does hmm. okay interesting uh, so before we wrap this up the last thing here well, would you like to say anything to your would you like to say anything to the nurses, doctors, or the essential workers right now? Que antes que termine la entrevista, hay algo que tú le quisieras decir a a los doctores y los enfermeros y esa gente que están dando frente. Um, he's trying to say um, if you can spray a little bit more water, oh. but that. Yeah, so like the the like the 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 nurses, doctors during mm -hmm. during COVID season. Oh you, no. Yeah. No, pues bueno, mira, yo siento que tienen que seguir encima de, de, de ese virus porque, mira, de verdad que, que es delicado ese tema, pues, y entonces no podemos descuidarnos. Um, I think we have to be on top of that virus still. It's, it's a very delicate um, thing going on and we cannot, like, just forget about it and be thankful for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, before... Um... Before we close this out, would you like to say, uh, would you like to plug anything where, where, and tell our fans where they can find you on social media? Ah, no, en mi Twitter y oh. en... You can find him in Twitter. Mm -hmm. and Instagram, he always, he's more active than Instagram. ¿Cuál es Instagram? Mm -hmm. El Menol 43. Any no. Call of Duty. He's always there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. PlayStation or Xbox? PlayStation. <laughs> PlayStation. 24-7. Nice, nice. Hey, uh, but I want to give a shout out to your wife. And uh, we didn't catch your name. What, what was your name? Nairobi. Oh, yes. I just want to say thank you for helping us out with this. And a uh, big shout thank out you. to you. And uh, this is this was awesome. We learned a lot from this. And, uh, and this, not, yeah, this uh, wraps up episode 1028. And Thank you for joining the show. It's truly an honor. And we would love to have you back on the show at some point down the line so you can meet the full team. But uh, good luck the rest of the season with Mexico. Uh, we're rooting for you, man, throughout the way. And hope um, we hope you get another opportunity in the majors. I'm hoping that happens. And uh, But uh, th just keep up the great work. Keep grinding. And uh, you're doing great things. And uh, Cole, would you like to say anything to finish off? No, I just – Nathan, you pretty much said it all. Just thank you, Bruce. Thank you all. And uh, thanks for the opportunity. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. And Thank then um, we'll send you the uh, all the stuff uh, um, on Twitter for you guys and Instagram. Thank you. Thanks.